We're here with none other than Stang Mode in his beautiful Blue Ember Dark Horse at Mustang Week. Thank you, bro. Listen, Happy to be here. I just want to say a big shout out to my guy here. <laughs> Chris is a soldier. He's been working hard. He, the guy, the work this guy puts in, he doesn't get enough credit, but if I can give him credit now, oh, you're too kind. he deserves it. Uh, but today is about the dark horse. Heck yeah. Six speed. No holes barred reviewed. No holes barred, bro. All right. All right. We're going to just let it rip because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot to with talk about. Dinos and uh, it's a lot, but let's drive and kick it off. Yeah. Enjoy the air conditioning. Little, little cars and coffee with Chris Cervenka and Stita. Did I say your last name right? Yeah. Okay. Spot on, man. All right. Listen, man. This guy, I've been reading his articles. You know, the famous knee bouncer. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, like, can we start from the jump with the the the, the heat that Scott Boda gave me on the zero to sixty? <laughs> can we just go from the jump? Uh, Stang mode got three point nine seconds zero to sixty. You know I like your Stang mode, but I'm calling BS on that. <laughs> three point nine zero to sixty. Listen, that's what the Ford track app said and you that know, was out in LA right that was out in LA okay. the media cars there was a, a GT performance 10 speed and you know that's what it got I, you know the numbers don't lie they say they say men lie women lie numbers don't that's what the numbers <laughs> told us so I had to go with that flow so um, no I, th you know like we talked about as far as 0 to 60 just like Dino there's so many factors involved oh my gosh. from you know, uh, humidity, uh, you know, air density, the tire, the, the braking miles, the fuel. But we're in the dark horse because kind of, from my perspective as a fan, because believe it or not, guys, I'm a fan. I'm not a tuner. I'm not a company. I'm just a guy playing a guy who loves Mustangs on YouTube. And like you, I was like, hey, why isn't there higher horsepower on the dark horse? Right. Uh, let's see what it's all about. And then you guys were the first in the in the world not right. to be dramatic but in the world <laughs> to have the dark horse dino number and it seemed a little bit lower than we all were you know expecting there were and i listen i'm not here to make excuses yeah um i'm just going to be honest like let's look at the facts first off we know our dino is very realistic we've we've had plenty of other cars in the past we've had 22s and 23 gts bone stock and they're in the 375 to 382 383 range like then that's horsepower. And, yeah. you know, it kind of sucks with it being a 450 some horsepower car, but that's today's world. And those are the factors that, you know, we're, we're being dealt with. And then on top of that, you factor in the fact that we were literally in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I want 500 <laughs> wheel. That's what I want. But no. um, those factors have a ton to play into with, with the numbers. Um, I'm not sure what barometric pressure does uh, to to dyno numbers. Obviously, I know density, altitude, and, and humidity, and and the air density of you know of the air itself. Um, you know, colder, denser air is going to make more power. But with the the barometric pressure being as low as it is in the middle of a hurricane, we literally had the eye pass by. I'll have Frank <laughs> put up a screenshot of the radar. We had the eye pass by Stita. Um, and at that point, it was a category two going into a category one. The barometric pressure could have potentially have some effect on that. Well, you know what? That's fine. But let's talk about the butt diner. Are you ready? Woo! This is the diner I'm talking about, baby. Flat foot shifting in the dark horse. This is where you really want to bring it out. Flat foot? Yeah. Well, that's what I was told. Above, th above 5,000 RPM. You got flat foot. You can flat foot shift. That feels good. So that was pretty cool. That's buttery smooth too. I had to do, I know you were talking, there was an open road. Uh, you just have to do it, you just have to do it. We just hit the speed limit there, so everything is cool. I mean, do we want to do pulls or we talk, talk about barometric pressure? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's bounce back and forth here. I think what's most important that you see smiles on our faces because- 100%. Let me, let, let's, let's, be, let's be the haters for a minute. And I don't even hate, let's be the people who are being, I would say practical and trying to actually just give their honest opinion. Is it pricey? Yes. I would say yes. Yep. Uh, is it not as fast as people were hoping as far as Donna numbers are concerned? I would say, yeah, you know, you would think that it'd be, it's not going to be as high as who people hoped. And like we said, Donna numbers are different. Mm -hmm. And looks, in my opinion, are subjective. Um, 
a yeah. lot of people being here at Mustang Week. We've been here a couple of days. I've been here a couple of days. You guys just got here. I haven't heard one people person say it's ugly or they don't like it. I've heard love it. People taking pictures, excited to see it because in person, uh, it it looks it's it's hard to be the new kid in the block. Remember yep. the 2018 came out. Everyone was like, it's ugly. It looks like a catfish. And then <laughs> it's like right. one of the best selling S. One hundred percent. Like, and I mean, they said the same thing about the S five fifty. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They even, yeah. they, I mean, I even heard the same thing when the thirteen fourteen refresh came out after ten to twelve. Yeah. Like, it's just. Yeah. It's it's the same kind of thing. You're you, you're everyone's blown away at that first impression. Pictures never do a car justice. No. Ever. You know the dark horse and all the S six fifties. They look pretty darn good in pictures, mm -hmm. subjectively, my opinion. Um, but in in person. It's, yeah, it's, and I, it's I, much different and much better. I feel like I could sound like an apologist, but I'm just stating the fact that we have a V8 Mustang, guys, from another generation. Yes. Like, can we just be excited about that? <laughs> like, and like, all things considered, yes, there are some shortcomings um, that are coming out in the woodwork, but at the end of the day, Challenger's gone. Charger's gone. Camaro's yep. gone. Emmys are dead. Yes. Uh, TRX is going away. Yeah. The, the Hellcat's going away. Like, we have a freaking Mustang. That's awesome. We a have a whole, uh, we <laughs> got thumbs is. up, we got people, we got some Mustang communities driving by, so we're getting some thumbs up. Uh, but no, you're right, 100%. There's no more Hemis, no more Hellcats, no more Camaros. We have Mustang and we have a whole generation. One of the coolest things I saw was that we had young kids coming up and loving the dark horse. And yeah. That's a good thing because our, that's our the next hobby, generation. our hobby can go on, you know, you have one coming, our hobby can go on with our kids. And I love that. And the fact that, yes, we're not gonna talk about anything EV here, <laughs> but the fact that we still have a nice ice V8 and stick shift. This has a nice Tremec, which I love, basically from the 350. But we talked about flat foot shifting, right. rev matching, this new drift brake. Yeah. You, you got a chance to check it out, right? Oh yeah. Dude. It's fun. It's like, <laughs> it's a great package from the box. We are gonna unlock it with what Steeda can do with suspension and their parts. Yep. That's a whole fun, look what they did with the silver bullet, guys. So let's, before we put it against King Kong and what the S550 did, nines, NA, you know what I right. mean, all that. Let's drive the car, learn it, enjoy, appreciate it. Yes, it's controversial because no more, no more double brow. It has the new screens, and what I would say is appreciate the S550 has double brow. This is the this is the future, and so far, I'm a fan of it. I would encourage you if you're not going to buy one, at least test drive some of your friends. Go see it in person. I'm not telling you to go trade in your S550. I'm saying if it just so happens you need a new Mustang, maybe you turned your Mustang into a drag car like I did. <laughs> you can't drive with the parachute everywhere. Uh, the S550, it's like luxurious. Yep. What is it, wireless car play? You have the all the new tech, like all the features of a modern a luxury. Like it feels, a lot of BMW people are like, oh, it looks like a BMW inside. That's not a bad thing. No. <laughs> I mean, it has a lot in there heated and cool seats, and I would say, if you're cautious about it, watch Stita, watch me maybe screw it up, and then do what you think is best in your opinion, because then you can make an informed decision with your finances, it is something you want. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I, I'm, a, I'm a thumbs up for it, but I wouldn't so heavily compare to a supercharged S550 yeah. or, you know, go ahead. At the end of the day, like, Ford, had a lot of check boxes they need to meet they needed to meet to make this car happen mm -hmm. um, from an engineering standpoint we all know about the EPA like there's a lot of different factors that go into making cars nowadays and at the end of the day we should be thanking Ford for making this happen yeah like we we could be sitting in you know the, all, the only <laughs> hey nothing wrong with the Mach-E it nothing, has its place it? and I personally believe that this would not be here if it weren't for the no Mach -E. that was a necessary evil in a way 100% in a way it was a necessary evil and, and the Mach-E has its place it's fun yeah but it is yeah this is all American this is us V8 man powered muscle stick shift V8 you know and you have the new tech and you have a warranty um and the critiques against it is it's not gonna blow away S550 as far as horsepower from the no. factory is concerned it is more expensive and maybe the looks are to be desired for some people, but, and you know, the whole thing, it looks like a Camaro, Camaro. Right. Like, 
again, we talked about it. They're both fastback coupes. Yeah. There's going to be some similarities, but the, the reality is the Camaro doesn't exist. So there's not going to be no 25 Camaro you can exist put it against. Right. Ford owns that whole market. Yep. So I get, I do see some similarities. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but what I'm saying is there's still a running pony on the grill. It's a Mustang. I'm saying let's celebrate it. Let's be excited thing. about it. Let's enjoy them. Hopefully these prices, you know, you got a dealer does a market up and you can hopefully in a good place to buy it. But I think as you start hitting the community, they go out to Mustang Week, Steeda starts throwing their awesome parts on there. We'll really be like, hey, this is a whole, you know, awesome opportunity to just enjoy the, the Mustang. Um, so I, I was I was trying to be raw. I was trying to be raw, true. but like, I, I, at the end of the day, you know, we're 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 purists, we're enthusiasts, we really enjoy what the Mustang, we were just talking about how great it is, the community around Mustang, mm -hmm. right? Like one of the one of the best things about this car is something that has nothing to do with this car. It's the community. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And uh, and you can walk up to anybody that, and, and everyone has a story about a Mustang, um, whether it's something that directly related, you know, affected them or, you know, their relative had one, their neighbor did, but everyone's got a story about a Mustang and that's not just national, it's worldwide. Um, and this is this is what makes me. I drove it nine hours here. I'm gonna drive it nine hours home. One of the, <laughs> some of the things that make me like, it's very comfortable to drive. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's so much more room for my beer belly. So what <laughs> happens is the dash is a little bit more forward. Yep. So you have more room there. I feel like the way I love the, yeah the you way can the see sight lines the are. Now. There's no hood shake and yep. the. The, I would I don't know the right word, but like the way everything thumps and closes and latches feel more refined. It's quieter. Yep. It it just feels like a, a very polished product. And you know, and remember the S550. We're talking about 2015. That's like seven eight years ago now. Yes. So we have really good sound ending materials. Everything is nice. Of course, it's a dark horse, so you have the Alcantara parts and whatnot. But you'll be sitting there and. It, You'll know what I'm talking about if you're watching. There is this adrenaline rush you get with your Mustang. You can buy yourself, maybe you're on your way home, right. you go on and off ramp, and you get to just, you, you drop a gear, and you literally disappear, and you get that adrenaline rush, you're like, all right, I'm in my Mustang. So, and it has the modes. You have normal, sport, track, drag, you know, you, of course you have the weather, of course you have the custom modes. Right. I do miss the toggles, I'll be real. It is, I felt like I was a fighter jet pilot. I know? do miss the toggles, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, and remember, this is just the beginning. There's so many more models to come out for the S650. Oh yeah. So even if the GT or Dark Horse aren't your cup of tea, because it's the next generation, we They're could see coming. a boss. We could see maybe a Cobra. There's so much coming. But I think you won't go wrong getting something like this in the Dark Horse because it's a new nameplate, first of its name. Uh, but it, it, that should show you how popular the Mustang is. It has a lot of weight on its shoulders. Like you wouldn't believe the expectations. The expectations yeah. of a Mustang are probably greater than any nameplate in mm -hmm. uh, the automotive space. I'd say probably outside of what a Tesla or F one fifty. People are like are just up all about the and and for good reason. We love these cars. They're our hobbies, um, and you know. I'm always humbled. I'm honored that Ford take notices of, of what me and Steve, uh, me and Chris, I would say, I would say Chris Tita, <laughs> but uh, what we do because right. we are we're obsessed. I'll be real. Yeah. You gotta be obsessed with this to do what we do. Sit four hours, but we have a little time to do a little pull here. So the meat and the power band. So we're gonna flat foot shift here. Yep. So you feel that flat foot shift? So it's smooth. Let me slow down on. before we get a little in a little trouble, but there you go. Feels good. It's fun. It's, it's wait till it gets boosted if you guys are, are waiting for that. But around town. In due time. In due time. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think I think this is a good product. And if you could swing, if you have one in order, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. And so obviously we're sitting on a dark horse, we're talking about a dark horse, but there's two other trim levels. You have the EcoBoost, you have the GT, both Stangmoto and I were out in LA, had the opportunity to drive those cars, 
experience them firsthand. Autocross for the EcoBoost, the drift brake, and then obviously taking the GT out and the canyons and all that good stuff. Those trim levels, correct me if I'm wrong, we were talking about this a little bit off camera, but like where EcoBoost and GT were in S550 versus where they are in S650 and like the oh, yeah. Royal lineup of Mustangs, there's a lot of hand-me-down parts yep. that the S650s are getting right off the base model. Mm -hmm. um, that EcoBoost is zero slouch. Like, the, yeah. the they have a new twin scroll turbo on it. It's spooling up a lot quicker. Yeah, the peak numbers aren't much different, but you're getting into the meat of that torque cur curve a lot quicker. Um, you know, it, it, and then the GT, I mean, you still got, you still got the magnesium, you know, yeah. the two screens, you get a lot of the creature comforts. And the performance package still has a lot of the goodies that this dark horse has. Um, you don't get the cooling, you know, and all the track focused things, but you get the same brakes. Yep. I mean, aside from the two piece rotors versus the one piece, but those are easy to swap out. Stay tuned to steeda.com for those. Mm -hmm. But like, there's, there's a lot to be had even at the EcoBoost and GT level if the Dark Horse isn't your cup of tea. Or yeah, not and the budget. Dark Horse, I think, from what we've what I've driven, is more a Mach 1 uh, predecessor than a Shelby 350 because the 350 is a whole different motor. Uh, a whole is it, you know it's a Voodoo flat plane crank. Right. It's a different kind of vehicle. This is your 50. Uh, this is more or less your modern S uh, 550 Mach 1. But what I would give it the edge over the Mach 1 is the steering rack. The steering yes. rack is new. The way you, it turns in and out. You can make a real U-turn now. <laughs> 100%, and I will say a lot of the reviews out there, especially when um, the embargo lifted and people that did go out in LA and they talked about the steering feel, we want to clarify. The steering feel is different from the ratio, right? Yeah. Um, how the steering, the feedback you get from the steering, uh, I would say it's on par, uh, similar to S550, not that much different or improved, similar. Um, so that's kind of the same, but the ratio. Mm -hmm. that, that is immediately what I, the first S650 I got behind the wheel of was the, was the EcoBoost um, going around that autocross track. So I was immediately all out, right? Yeah. And I, I put it in the turn and like, I, it, it took I mean, it took it got yeah, I got used to it quick, but it took a it took a little bit of time to kind of get used to that different ratio. But once I did, yeah. Between that, the flat bottom steering wheel, you know, you have that, you know, when you turn the wheel and you're in an autocross situation and you're really cranking on that wheel, you don't have to look down at the wheel. There's no sight line there, yes, but you have the the physical reference in your hand to know where that wheel is by knowing where that flat bottom is you know what i'm saying absolutely um i think if you're if you're autocross guy i would go with like a uh if you can swing it i would go with the the, the dark horse track pack that's a little pricey if you're a drag racer like me i would do what cita's doing the silver bullet yep 2.0 i guess we're yeah, calling it 2.0 2.0 10 speed, I think they still have a 300A package. So or? we got we got a 300A package, okay. 10 speed car, no performance package, yeah. and we optioned in the 355s. Love it. So it's it a great starting point. Yep. Um, obviously, we're gonna play with everything, try to get the, the fastest we possibly can out of yeah. that car, continually add parts just like we did with the Silver Bullet and do it all over again. But um, it's you, you have options. Yeah. You have yes. options where you can do a track build, you can do a drag build. And I wouldn't look at a fully maxed out, overpriced MS, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like overmarked ADM. ADM. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what you can do. Go to the builder. You can build a car in the high 40s, low 50s that suits what your purpose is behind it. Yeah. And if you want to wait and see a little bit more, like I would, I would recommend test driving it. And again, I'm not here to tell you to get rid of your S550. I'm not here to tell you that, hey, this is all a 100% better car than S550. I'm telling you, from my humble opinion, why I like it for what the improvements they made. And I, you know, I like tech. I like the future. I like modern stuff. These screens, the backup camera is like a freaking like 60 inch TV. I mean, 4K. Yeah, like you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna love it. I love. I know it's cliche. I do like the the Fox Body speedometer. I think uh, it's who cool. Who it's at nighttime. I drove uh, With the, the other, little green. Yeah, yeah, dude, I love it. And <laughs> the spinning the car around. It's it's this is you know what this is this is not a family car though I I've made it a family car. Uh, it's not a grocery grader though I made it a grocery grader. <laughs> this is a fun 
freaking car. No doubt. The Mustang is for is for the fans. It's for the people. And I know it sounds stupid, the remote rev is like, oh, who needs that? It's cool. Yep. It's it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's corny, but it's corny, but you, it's cool. It's there and you can use it if you yeah, want. Yeah, like don't compare like practicality to a Mustang. Of course. Yeah. It has it has a freaking drift brake. Yeah. That's just fun. Like, if you, and you get so serious and bogged down by the details, you miss the point of Mustang. It's about having fun, being carefree, having a hobby, and for some people like myself, it's therapy. I, anyways, I think I was I was telling Chris before I was, I was like, listen, I'm gonna let it all hang out and tell you how I really feel, and no holds barred, and it ended up in love fest for the car. It's true, but <laughs> that's that's how we feel. Yeah. Um, it's not the jump to the Coyote we had in 2011, yeah. right? When we went from 315 horsepower to 400, what, 412? Yeah. Like, that was a 100 horsepower. That it was a massive jump in power. It's not, it's not that. But I, I wanna say one of, the, one of the journalists, they said, uh, and I forgot who it was, but they called the S650 a evolution, not a revolution. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was spot on because like this is the pinnacle, this is the culmination of everything that, a culmination of everything that Ford learned about the S550 and then brought in the S650 and made it all better. Yep. Like, comment below and let us know how much you love Mustangs. <laughs> if you have any comments on all the things we talked about here because there's a lot of content. Stay mode. Listen, I just want to say thank you so much, Tita, for the opportunity. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for always showing support, and we try to be real. We ask you to be real back. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, the notification bell for both Stang Mode and Stita. Don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.